Professor Wilson doing? Tissue exploration and a histology demonstration. Very good. Okay, we're going to start with the average grocery store chicken leg quarter. Um, you guys tell me what are some things that you know already about this chicken leg? It's raw, that's true. <laughs> and so one precaution we want to say, Please I'm doing this barehanded because I want to emphasize to students how you really learn tissues when you feel the tissues and you can feel the difference in the textures of these tissues. And a lot of people have cooked and handled raw chicken meat when they're cooking barehanded. So it, it, it is a, um, a hygiene issue. You will want to, of course, wash your hands immediately after handling this and not touch any other features in the classroom or on your body. Um, but I'm going to do this barehanded. People could certainly wear gloves, and it would be less of a of an issue. But um, anything else you could tell me about this chicken leg? Some of the fat. You can see some fat, and what does the fat look like? The white. Okay, it's kind of whitish, or it's even sort of a yellowy mm -hmm. color. Okay, this is fat. What I'm pulling off right here, which is easily well, you tell me. Describe what it's like as I'm handling it. Elastic. It's what? Elastic. It's kind of elastic. It's a little bit stretchy. Okay. It, was it hard for me to tear that off of there? No. No, nope, it comes away pretty easily. It's loosely attached. See the stuff that looks like spider webs right here? That as I pull that away, um, adipose tissue is a form of loose connective tissue. We describe this loose material that is holding it in place is the areolar, or what a lot of people just refer to as loose connective tissue. See how airy it is. What does that look like to people? How would you describe that tissue? Does it look like anything you've ever seen before? Definitely spider web, a spider web. Often they look like spider webs. I'm going to pull some other parts apart. We're going to run it under some water in a minute and it'll show up really nicely. But when I pull skin off, see as I pull the skin away, there's these little, they look like fibers or mesh. You see that? That is the loose or areolar connective tissue that connects this skin to the underlying muscle or bones that are underneath. Same thing on you. That's what holds your skin on. Okay, that's loose connective tissue. Um, you can see the fat, like when you flip it over, you can see the fat is in, well, on the other side. Right, so. You can see it going through all the muscles. See how it's yellowy on the underside of this, this skin layer? That is the subcutaneous. It's a loose connective tissue layer with adipose tissue in it. And so most organisms that are having enough nutrition to store a little extra fat um, will have a layer of subcutaneous fat under their skin. Look at that little bubble. See that bubble that forms right here when I'm pushing? You can make those with water by running water on here too. That's that layer of loose connective tissue trapping air. So maybe the fact that you see bubbles will help you remember that that's the airy layer. Okay. Now, yes, it provides good insulation. Yeah, the more um, in colder climates, you will find animals and people have more of this subcutaneous fat. What's this bright reddish kind of stuff we're seeing? What do you think? There's got to be blood in there. That's why it's red. This is a softer tissue. It's a little smushier. Okay. This is. Uh, these are the part of the kidneys of the chicken here, okay, um, and possibly lymphatic structures in here, um, and they have a little bit of sponginess but some firmness. Mostly there's going to be a reticular tissue in there, and so the reticular fibers, a reticulum being a network or a mesh, those fibers will make it a little bit semi-solid, have a little bit of a shape, but still be kind of soft and spongy. So those are good to, to feel and fiddle around with there too. Then we have some places where now instead of, instead of, let's see, let's try this. Instead of this spider webby stuff being airy and loose, now I'm having to pull a lot harder on it. So what's happening here where I now have to really yank on this tissue? Okay, let me find another spot where we can yank on some of that. We're going to have to take some skin off here. Oh, here we go. Right here. Can you see how does this right here, this area, look different from the surrounding tissue? It's a little darker. Which is darker? 
the, this is, what color is this? Brown. Kind of a brownish or pinkish brown. And this is more... Bluish gray. Yeah, kind of bluish gray or even a whitish color. <clears throat> we are now forming dense regular connective tissue. More and more fibers in that loose connective tissue makes it dense. And that is becoming more of a tendon. So this is a, what we call an aponeurosis, a sheet of tendon right here. I'm having difficulty getting to it. That's it's an actual that's, sheet of tendon, or is it yep. a sheet surrounding? It's a sheet of tendon. Um, you find it in certain t types of muscles where they attach. Instead of in a little skinny band, they attach in a sheet. Okay, now I can get my... Oh, I've got one right here. Thank you. Um, I'm going to try and grab that. And Whoa, man, that's really attached, isn't it? It's really tough. Ooh, I'm having a hard time there now look at that when I pull that away how does that look different from that other loose connective tissue that I was doing earlier look at that it doesn't come up as stringy as the other there well that's a nice piece right there can you, you see the muscle coming with it yeah it's attached to the muscles oh, so what elastic yeah, it's not as elastic, exactly. So what is that? It's not stretchy and it's attached to muscles. Not stretchy and attached to muscles. If I yank on it really hard, a tendon. The muscle tears more easily than the tendon tears. So the more dense regular, the more dense, um, the more collagen we pack in there, the more densely packed we make it, the tougher and tougher it gets. I think it looks an awful lot like strapping tape like they use at the UPS store to package up where it has the threads that are embedded in it and you can't tear that stuff for anything. You have to cut through it and that's a lot what like tendons become. Okay, And that's one of the problems that people have with injuries sometimes. You have loose connective tissue, you get an injury. You start to put down more collagen and more collagen and it begins to make that connective tissue more dense and you get tied, the muscles get tied. Um, it become basically immobilized and there's some disorders that can cause that and, and injuries can cause that because you stimulated the production of extra connective tissue in there and then that becomes basically like scarred tissue then the other tissue the other types of cells and fibers get replaced with collagen okay now how about this stuff right here the part that we like to eat on the barbecued chicken careful what do we like to eat what's the part we like to chew Those are muscles. These are the chicken muscles. Okay, and you should. This is. This is a. These are legs. So, what kind of meat do you guys prefer to eat on chickens? You like dark? I like dark too. I'm a leg person. Who's a breast? Chicken breast. That's all my husband and my daughter will eat is the breasts. Okay. This is a dark meat. So these muscles are a nice, you know, more of a pink brown color. If this was a breast, it would be more of a pale whitish color. Um, and so I'd like you to go ahead and cut into some of these muscles and see what the texture of those muscles is like. And then peeking through here, I'm going to ask you guys to peel off, either use a scalpel or a scissor, peel off some of this meat from the bone. And actually, it's a really good idea. Mike, do we have a big scissor? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see if those will work. I may have to use the clippers. Mm -hmm. um, take a scissor. I'm going to do some bone crunching here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. Cut that drumstick mm -hmm. right off of that thigh. Okay. Oh, these are sharper than my kitchen scissors at home. I might have to borrow a pair of these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gosh, my kitchen scissors at home are terrible. Yeah. Okay. So, one thing I want you to look at now is try and get that meat off of the end of the bone so you can see some cartilage on these it's going to look it's kind of take a little extra time here to definitely get some crunching going here give me the clippers the big clippers okay? yeah let's try these now be careful, because once you're doing this barehanded for a while, you get a little slippery and slimy. 
Well, just remember that this is basically a dissection, and you're doing this in the interests of learning the science and how these tissues vary. If you ever have to work as a nurse or an assistant in an emergency situation like an EMT or as a, an assistant in a uh, nurse in an emergency room or an operating room. Okay, so what did I do? I just cut right through this bone. Okay, this is basically the femur of the chicken. Okay, and I've cut through there and look at the internal inside that bone. Okay, now in most human long bones, in this long part down here, we're going to find yellow marrow. And so like in beef bones, if you, if you give beef bones to your dogs, you will see, um, we cut through here, you'll see yellow marrow. In chicken bones, it's basically red all the way through. Um, but the yellow marrow is a good way to store extra fat for energy. Um, and then the red marrow is usually in the ends of our long bones, so up, up in the, the proximal and the distal ends of the femur and all your long bones will have red marrow. And that red marrow is where the red blood cells, well, all the blood cells basically are starting out. Your hemocytoblasts are all in the, the red marrow. Okay, so take a look at that. Feel the bone. Feel that marrow in there when it comes out. Um, try and get some of this tissue off the end so you can see the cartilage on here. In these, in these it's going to look white. Um, when it's really, really fresh, well, you get a little bluish tint to it. You'll see sort of a glassy, almost a clear-looking look to it. Let's see if our... Here you can see the... the Oh, actually, this would be the tibia. This would be the femur. So here's the cartilage. Just feel the cartilage. It's really smooth, really smooth and glassy on here. And you want that smooth surface for that joint to be able to move freely. Um, the other thing is we're going to take this over to the sink. I want to run some water on it and show you an interesting thing I noticed one day when I was heating it up for our, for our pets. You want to put it on a pause there? Okay. And we'll go take a look in the water.